get the microphone over here that would really help wouldn't it jeez i finally fixed the face part of this i have been struggling if you hadn't noticed in a bunch of my live videos in a bunch of different places with weird color because of the lighting that i use for my desk and now through the joy of i don't know technology stuff i have fixed it so I'm kind of excited, except I forgot the microphone bit. So hopefully you can hear me now. That would be awesome if you could tell me that you can. So it is my birthday. Last year, I did not get to have any kind of birthday party because my friends all said, oh, this will be over. This lockdown thing is going to be done. We'll have your birthday party like at the end of April, beginning of May, something like that, when it's all over. It's not over and I'm having another birthday. So we're having my party right here, right now. Tough luck on any quarantine pandemic or anything else. So I'm excited. I'm seeing all of your comments fly by. It is awesome to have so many of you here. And it's awesome that I got so many cards that I'm going to get to open today too. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I will tell you the plan for today. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. Yes, I can hardly read my writing right now, but we are going to have a couple of special things in this video. We're going to go through all the cards and you'll get to see them in just a second because there's a ridiculous number of cards. Oh my gosh. It's kind of an embarrassment of riches, which is great. I am glad for it. So we have plenty that we can actually talk about and spend time doing. I am going to select out of all of these people who sent in stuff, I am going to select winners. You did not know that. I did not tell you this, but I have nine flat rate envelopes stuffed to the gills with goodies. Now I can't afford to send them overseas. So if I pick any overseas winners out of any of these, then those will get a card instead. So at least you get a card, right? And we'll just pick another person in the States so that it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg because, you know, times are tough and I can't quite afford all of that for shipping. But I want to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's around here and do a little spring cleaning and send some stuff your way. So those of you who sent in cards, congratulations. You got entered for a prize you did not know existed. And I'm excited about that. Then also I'm going to give you a preview at the end of this particular video, once we get all done with all this, we pick the winners, I'm going to give you a preview of the next class, which is open right now for pre-registration for those who have their thinking caps on and can find it. But I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. One other thing that I want to mention real quickly, because I've had some questions about things in general. I'm going to try to see if I can read comments at the same time as I talk. I'm not sure I can do that. I may not quite be that smart, but I am doing a lot more of some other things right now than what I normally do. You may have noticed. I have been doing more shorts and reels and that kind of thing than I have been a little more long form content because my hand has been suffering with this repetitive stress injury. I haven't really had a chance to talk about it here on YouTube, I don't think. But about mm, two weeks ago, I guess now, I lost all use of my dominant hand, like nothing. I couldn't do it. I couldn't pick up a pencil and just even hold it lightly. I couldn't do anything with it. And that is from doing too much art, but also too much computer. And one of the things that I've found is that as I've been trying to pull back on things, but still do some stuff, it's a whole lot easier to shoot and edit a little short 30 second or 60 second video for one of these YouTube shorts or the reels on uh, Instagram 
than it is to produce an entire full tutorial. So some of the stuff is going to be in short form for a while until this all gets back to normal. I'm able to use it a lot more now. It's definitely better than it was. But I also just want to let you know that there's some things that'll be a little different for a while, including some of the types of content that I'm putting here on YouTube. Like I'm shooting videos with mediums and in styles and on projects that may not be very normal. There might not be a whole lot of cards for a while because those require a lot more fine motor control, which I don't have a whole lot of motor control. But there are also a few of the regular card making videos that you're used to that have been scheduled. They were done long before. So if you see a video and you're like, oh my gosh, like rest your hand, don't worry about it. If it's up, then it's something that I've already shot a while ago. I tend to work about three weeks ahead of time, which means that when something like this comes up, I still have content to go out and I have some time to figure all this out. And that's what I've been doing is trying to figure out where where to go with this and do I adjust by doing less videos here on YouTube or do I adjust by, you know, doing different kinds of videos. So I'm, I'm playing with that and trying to see how I can reduce my computer time primarily because that's the, the worst culprit, but it is getting better. So please don't stress out. And lots of you have been emailing and messaging with lots of advice. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm doing okay. So you don't need to stress out. Every time you send me one of those messages, I feel the need to reply, which then makes my hand do something because my left hand cannot type for anything. And Siri does not take good dictation. I'll just tell you that right now. She and I are having a time of it. So if you've also been waiting for answers on emails on some stuff, there's some that I'm just not answering because it was more of a, you know, giving me a heads up on something as opposed to asking a question that needs an answer. So I'm trying to strategically spend my time the best way that I can. Okay. So I hope that clears up the kind of changes that are going on. If you want more of the creativity type stuff, go to my Instagram reels tab. And the tabs are those little icons right above the feed as opposed to the there's highlights up there too, which are my little round icons, but there's little, little Instagram tabs. And there's one that says reels and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there now. And I put out a reel, you know, like every couple of days now, because I can do those really quick. I can just do it on my phone. I don't need to download anything to my computer and that sort of thing. So, so there's that. Let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. Play some of your old card videos just one day per week. Ah, that is something that I have been doing. So thank you for bringing that up. On Thursdays, I am doing a throwback Thursday. So I'm taking one of my videos from the past and re-upping it on social media and giving you a new idea with it and sometimes making a card with the same technique. And sometimes I'm turning them into a reel. Like I actually downloaded my own footage and chopped it up to make a really short little 30 second preview of it. So like this past Thursday, I did the stamped watercolor vases. And so you can check those out on my reels tab. I can't put reels on Facebook. They don't allow me to cross promote those. So sorry, Facebook, you don't get to see those unless you go over to Instagram. All right. So that is at least um, the main part of what I wanted to say for the time being, because we need to get busy on cards because there's a lot of them here. Um, I did see somebody say to smash the like button. So feel free to do that. So this button gets lots of love. And then YouTube says, oh, this is a popular video. We should share it with everybody because we have so much card inspiration in this box right in front of me that you can't see right now. And we're going to get to see the new class. Okay. So are you ready to get started? If you are, let me see some love out there in the comments. I think, I'm not positive, but I think these comments don't appear on YouTube. So YouTubers, if you're seeing that there's less comments and you're watching it on the replay, then leave a whole bunch of comments there because this stuff ends up in the chat box, not in the comments, okay? All right, let me switch over to the other view so you can see the insanity of the number of cards that I have. Look at this. 
This is crazy. I counted them the other day and it was 98. And I think there were two that arrived this morning or in yesterday's mail. I guess I, I got the mail at eight o'clock this morning. And yeah, I ended up with, I think, a hundred. So that's kind of exciting. And what I have done ahead of time is to slice open the envelopes so that I don't have to actually sit here and slice all them open. And we're going to breeze through them. I am, I'll tell you right now, I am not going to read them all. I'm just going to look at the beautiful cards. Because if I sit here and read them all, we will be here for a couple of days. And nobody wants to be here for a couple of days. Okay. But on these envelopes, I just want you to know also, I have put tape over the addresses so that nobody can see your address. But we can see who you are and what the beautiful card is. So let me zoom in to a card area, card size space. Beautiful little birthday card. This looks to me like Stamping Bella. Is that true? Could quite be. Lovely message inside. As I said, I will be reading the messages later. And this is from, it looks like Lori McCarthy. Thank you, Lori. That's beautiful. I love the red, yellow, and blue primary color combination. And this one, there might also be some get well cards in here because there are some people that sent two cards. And I believe I saw two. I can't even get the envelope open here. Um, I see, think I saw two from this address. And look at that. Look at the puppy. Puppy on the envelope. And this is a beautiful stitched card. How gorgeous is that? And it's from Lisa Beauty Moss. Nice and flat too. Look at that. Makes me want to cross stitch. Not enough to hurt my hand, but it makes me want to cross stitch. So next up is from McGuire. Let's see what the first name is. Kathy McGuire. A lovely MFT scene card. And this is a die for the grass. And it looks like a stencil was probably used for the clouds in the background. With little giallo. So cute. Next, we have It's a Good Day to Be Happy. And we have yellow. Lots of people sent in yellow envelopes. And I want to know where you got um, this yellow from because oh, I've been looking for yellow envelopes. And all I find is really yucky yellow colors. I'm not finding good yellows. And this is from Connie. So how beautiful is that? Shadow stamping in the back and then just the flowers and the leaves are colored in yellow and gray. These are the colors for the year for Pantone. They did yellow and gray. Now this one is a little thicker. So let's see if I can get it out of the envelope here. See, this one is also from Connie. This is the same person as made this one, I believe. And I'm going to guess that one is a, um, wow, two birthday cards from the same person. Well, there you go. Awesome. I was just figuring some of them when I, I saw doubles might end up being, um, uh, being get well cards because a lot of things, a lot of people wanted to send in get well cards after my hand incident. So this one, hooray, it's your day. Now this is either inking or airbrushing. I'm guessing inking because not many people do airbrushing. And this is from Lisa. Thank you, Lisa, for that beauty. Aren't these wonderful cards, you guys? Like, talk about great ideas. I'm going to see if I can get a whole bunch of pictures of them taken to post on social, like big groups of them, so you can see the cards for more than a second here. And this one is from the Wackerly family. And Laura is her first name with a little wiggly unicorn writing. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Oh, adorable. I love it. And this is an inked background, it looks like to me. I'm terrible at inking, so I'm always incredibly impressed with ink. And this is from Polly. Putting all the envelopes in a pile, because that's what I'll pick the winners from. And oop, there's something else in there, so I will open that later. But this is from one of my classes. This is the stamped watercolor class where you get to learn how to take an animal, put it on the bench, and then do winter trees behind it. 
Next up from Tom and Tina. I'm going to guess it's just from Tina, not from Tom. Age is not important unless you're wine. <laughs> and I have felt whiny of late. So there you go. Perfect for a day like mine. So I'm seeing lots of oohs and ahs and excitement in the comments. So yay for that. Uh, let's see. No address on the outside. Oh, this is one that made me laugh. Um, the town that's in here that you can't see is right next door to mine. It's Puyallup. It's over just over the way a little bit. And it went through Las Vegas to get here. Can you believe that? They sent mail from my neighbor through Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, just craziness. And it's a beautiful floral card. Isn't that lovely? Smile. It's spring. And then this one is from, it looks like Angie, if I'm reading the handwriting correctly. Oh, the pups and the kitty are looking at the cookies. Of course, the dog is going to be the one to get the cookies first because that is how it goes in my house. The dog is always the winner, always comes out the winner. And then this is from Melissa. Wishing you a birthday filled with sunshine and rainbows. Look at all the detail in this dye, whatever it is, or whether they're, I don't know if they're, she was using circle dyes and just cut out a whole bunch of them, like just half of them to make a rainbow card. Or if that's a dye that has all of those different shapes and edges to them. But that's a pretty cool idea. Very nice. And this one is from Susan. Celebrate your big day with cake. Happy birthday. This reminds me of, of some of the old style cards I used to make when I used a lot of pattern paper. Don't do that much anymore. I don't own much pattern paper. All right, another stack here. This is so much fun seeing all these cards. So there might need somebody to be... Uh, Knocked out of YouTube here. There's just a bunch of spam comments in there. Sorry about that, guys. I don't have anybody being my admin, so we just have a person being goofball. And this is from Le Prevost. Uh, Susan. Thank you very much, Susan, for this sweet little card. Look at the little surprise behind the back of the little stamped character. Knocking at the door. Very cute. This one from the Smith family, probably not from the family, but there you go. Let's see what the first name is here. This is from Colleen, and she's got an inked background around here and then just circles with really simple flowers. Now, I seem to recall that Cece, um, the watercolor lady, that I recall she did a flower card similar to this where she just made different blobs and then drew flowers in them. Does anybody, does that ring any bells for any of you? That looks like it might be from her tutorial. Very sweet. All right, from Kathy. Okay. This one is going to do amazing things. It's going to stand up. Oh, I had it backwards. It stands up. Look at that. It's like a little mailbox. How cute is that? It's got a little flap and everything. And then her note is hidden back in here. Thank you, Kathy. That is so cute. I'm going to have to stand that up on the shelf and just leave it out. Because that's adorable with all these hearts popping out of it. How sweet. So next up we have Sherry. Didn't do the best job of opening all my envelopes really well. Just keep swimming. This is the mermaid from Ellen Hudson. And she's made some a background full of some lovely, very loose and washy kinds of seaweed stuff. So her mermaid has a place to live. But one thing about this mermaid stamp, I've always wondered how people handle the top of it because there's like no mermaid up there. So you have just the mermaid tail almost like she's been cut in half. Always kind of makes me giggle a little bit. So we have half a mermaid. This is from Andrea. Beautiful, a lovely rose for my birthday. 
My sister, by the way, sent me flowers today. I just got them after our Zoom call. So we, we got off our Zoom call and then the doorbell rang. So she sent me flowers, which was nice. My whole family did a big Zoom this morning. Okay, this is from Kathy. It says on the envelope, look at that. That is some stunning, very dark color. So I don't know if that was masked off. And then the background, it almost looks like it's the intensity of Zig clean color pens. So I'm not sure the technique, but it might have been somehow using some masking to do that and then get this really intense, dark, rich color around these flower shapes. Beautiful. Just stunning. I love cards with contrast. You guys know me. All right, Amy... This is Amy's card. Oh, look how cute. Look how adorable this is. And I don't know if she drew all of her own trees. It looks kind of like it. I don't know that I've ever seen a stamp with those kind of trees in it. It's possible that she didn't, but I'm going to just guess that she did because they look gorgeous. Love all the greens she's got going and the gnome is adorable. Look at all his little, little furry hair on his beard. And really nice shading all over everything. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous card. Very nice job on that. And, okay, so this one is from Sherry B. And has a piece of very interesting embossed paper for the cover of it, which I will have to use on a card because that's really pretty. And then lots more beautiful dye work. Look at all these gorgeous dyes. All that detail in there. And then putting flowers on top of it that are also die cut. And then a little bit of ribbon. That's ribbon that goes across there. Just beauty must. Beauty must, beauty must. Okay, next up. We have something from Lisa. And if you've wondered, I'm doing all the A2 size cards first. I put them in size order in my box. Yeah, I wish we had an administrator to block. We don't have any administrator but me, sadly. I wonder if I could jump over there and do that. I wonder if I can hop into the YouTube on my... Or wait, I'm in the YouTube on my iPad. Can I do something about that? Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to put user in timeout, or I'm going to hide user entirely and see if that makes him go away. Let's see if that worked. Did he go away? Because <laughs> it was getting kind of annoying. I finally figured out how to do that. Look at me. I'm pretty fancy. All right, back to cards. This one that I say was from Lisa with a beautiful vase. Look at that lovely glass work that she did. Looks like some white pen or white uh, paint used there. And just a really simple striped background. Very pretty. All right. Next up, I don't have a name on the envelope here, but it is from Europe. I'm trying to see. It's Royal Mail, which must mean it's from the UK. Uh, let me peek and see what is the name of the person. It is from Wind Wendy. W-E-N-D-I-E, -E. so different spelling of Wendy, with, of course, a yellow card and yellow sequins. Yay for yellow. I got a lot of yellow in my mail. <laughs> oh, you guys know me so well. It's wonderful. All right, this is from Jeanette. Next, look at that. Look at all that beautiful color. It's like alcohol ink, absolutely yummy and happy and Delicious color. Yay! And shiny, too. She's got the uh, sentiment and that layer of paper are both in that shiny paper. Next up is Marlena. Marlena. Hello, beautiful. Thank you. I'm feeling rather beautiful myself. I did my hair today for you all. <laughs> Even though you're going to be seeing all these beautiful things, I did my hair so I could feel as beautiful as the cards. Next up, Gail. <coughs> Excuse me. And she put some decor on the inside of her envelope. A bunch of these, by the way, are at homemade envelopes too. 
You're a superstar. This looks like an Operation Right Home sketch. I used to run an organization where we did a lot of sketches and stuff, and this looks very much like it could be one of those. Really fun. Lots of paper layers and red, white, and blue and yellow. So she's got that nice primary color scheme going. Beautiful. And then Terry. Let's celebrate you. Oh, I have to show you guys something that came in. This butterfly made me think about it. My sister sent me a cake, and the cake came in an explosion box. Let me get the explosion box out. It's a little sidetrack here. The cake came in this explosion box that had a lid, and it was all closed up, and it had a, a nice solid lid on top, and it has cake in there for me. Yay for red velvet. But the box was filled with these. And these have, these are butterflies that have this opening and two little hooks on either side that has a rubber band in between it. And they were all spun up like this. And when you let go of it, they tucked in seven of these into that tiny little box. And when you let go of these, it does this. Are you ready? One, two, three. Well, okay. It, they flew all over the room. They went crazy all over the place. It was the most amazing explosion of stuff. And my sister made sure that I opened it on Zoom so everybody else could watch. And I screamed and everything went everywhere. And the dogs went crazy. But you can see it, it kind of makes this really wonderful explosion thing. So it's this rubber band here. And it's hooked onto two hooks on the top and bottom. Isn't that cool? That is pretty nifty. Anyway, okay sidetracked from the butterfly got reminded of it by seeing that one beautiful and I love the the colors brought in from the pattern paper and stuff really nice nice unity across the card and this is from Eric and Michelle again I'm going to guess it's from Michelle I'm going to guess that Eric had nothing to do with this so we have a seashell card nice soft pastel feel to it Beautiful texture in the background. Can you see that? There's a wood grain. Okay, sorry, my camera doesn't want to show you the wood grain, but there's a wood grain back there. Just beautiful. And then this is from Barbara. And this is all ice cream. This one looks like a sad face, though. We have to turn that that frown upside down unless maybe it's a little, little bunny who's sad that he's going to get eaten or maybe he's cold but <laughs> I think it's really cute me and sugar get along really well together so there you go very very cute I like this lots of really great Copic blending and shading and stuff in this very nice I'm gonna stack these up so they don't fall over I cannot wait to get to sit down and read all the messages inside these and see if they all were really fully birthday. This is from, I believe, Donna. I recognize her last name. Look at that, an adventure. So it's a, a zigzaggy kind of card fold thing. Opens like this with a panel for the message there. Very nicely done. I've never seen a card with that kind of a fold, so pretty awesome. Might have to go look that up and see what it's called. We have one here in another yellow envelope from Kim. This is an even better yellow color than the one that I saw Excuse me earlier. Look at that. Beautiful dye work around this with the stamp. Like, how do people get the stamps and the dies to line up so perfectly. I am completely incapable of that. So I'm super impressed. Now that that's possible that this could be a manufactured sticker just as I'm looking at it. So maybe that's the case. But if not, then you are an amazing die cutter, whoever, um, uh, Kim. But this is absolutely beautiful. I love all the, the texture and the shine that you get from the pattern paper and the embossing and everything. Just beautiful. All right, another stack. Here we go. I have just so many stacks of these. It's crazy. You guys sent in so many cards. All right, here we have one from Amy. Oh, let's go right side up. 
with a little basket full of all kinds of goodies. Camera, butterfly, heart, all kinds of yummy things. And popped on uh, some dimensional adhesive here. Paper layers. Love me some dimension and paper layers. Next up, we have a card from Linda. If I can get it out here. A bouquet to celebrate you. Oh, very sweet. And some of these are painted on, and then this one looks like either a die cut or a sticker on top, which is kind of nice. Interesting combination of techniques and things. This one just has the last name on it. Let's see what the first name is. I'll take a peek from Janet. Yellow border, of course, and all of the critters. Look how cute they are. They're adorable. And this looks like watercolor pencil, I think. I'm going to guess. Because there's pencil lines just a little tiny bit, but not nice blending. So it's probably watercolor pencil. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Are you liking what you're seeing here? So this is from Lynn. Have a super duper birthday. And the little scooter scoots along. Isn't that fun? I have that die. I need to make cards with that die where things move across. Very sweet. These, this is a stamp from Ellen Hudson, a die from Ellen Hudson, and a sentiment from Ellen Hudson. And I'm going to guess these are probably from some of those leading ladies. Quite likely. She's got lots of Ellen Hudson on that card. Next up, Carrie. Oh, pretty, pretty. I don't know if this was done after I did my card where I did pencil on gray paper, but certainly pulled that off here beautifully. Look at how nice the, the gray stands out against the gray, and yet it has that really soft feel. It's not really stark. It's just very, very soft. Very pretty. And here's another one from one of the people that we saw a card from earlier. And this is a hello card. This is one I think I peeked in it just to see if it was a birthday card. But it is from Lisa. So this is a general hello as opposed to a, um, a birthday. But nice yellow background. Always loving the yellow. There's so much yellow in these cards. Isn't that great? Lots of ways to use that color. And here from Esther, one of my personal friends and card making friends. She was big into helping with Operation Right Home. And look how cute. Absolutely adorable little, little banners up there and a dimensional heart and a cupcake and just nice torn paper. Very nice. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And we have, I have the last name here. Let's see what the first name is. Sherry from Sherry Vernon. Better together, don't you think? I love this stamp. I love the fact that they made a stamp that has all the critters holding hands and I don't have to mask them all together. And they just come out together in the one stamp. So that's, that's a cute card. Very well done. Very pretty. And here is a card from Haley. And I think I saw two from her in the piles as well. And Haley, if I can get the card out, sorry. I'm, my previous opening of the envelope did not necessarily, okay, I'm going to have to tear the envelope. <laughs> I cannot get it out of the envelope. I think her card might be just a little bit tight in here. But it's cute as heck. Look at that. Little cactus dogs. Vienna and Giallo. Oh my gosh. Haley is a young lady and she came to one of my watercolor demos at Daniel Smith and she about came unglued when we met. It was so sweet. So thank you, Haley. This is adorable. And I love that Giallo has a couple little things coming out of his head, a little flower, because that would be Giallo. He would be the dog with the flower. 
<laughs> I think that's cute. I love when people customize cards. I just think it's, ah, anyway. I should stop waxing on and get moving. We've got a lot of cards to still get through. This is from Vicki. And it's a beautiful tag. Nice techniques for you know, doing some stamping. A little bit of um, dimensional. There's a punch on here. Little die cuts and things. Just lots of beautiful elements. Nice embossed background back here. Very pretty. And this one is from Christina. Wishing you a happy day with a yellow dragon. See, dragons can be yellow. I, I, you know, people can tell me dragons are green all they want. Dragons can be yellow and they look even cuter in yellow than they do in anything else. And I especially love that she used the colors that are in the pattern paper in the coloring. So I don't know whether she picked the pattern paper after doing the coloring or vice versa, but very nicely coordinated. Beautiful job, Christina. And next up, we have something from Christine. And again, yellow, beautiful yellow cards. Nice embossing work back here, or not embossing, a die cut work back here. And that's popped so that there's lots of dimension in here. I think that's popped. I don't even know. Or else it's just really thick paper. Maybe that's what it is. It feels like it's popped. And then all of these layers of flowers on here, stamped and colored in different ways. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And let's see. This one is from the Netherlands. There's no first name on the outside, but let me see. It's from uh, Willick, Willicky. W-I-L-L-E-K-E. -E. Close your eyes. Blow and make all wish. And somebody knows that I like all the foxes. I always color the foxes out of all the stamp sets. Maybe because the foxes are the closest to yellow. Maybe that's why I like them. But she did her own sentiment, it looks like, doing her own lettering with these. So very nicely done. And this is from Danny. Danny made a card here with lots of cute little lawn fawn critters having a birthday party. Very sweet. And one of their border dies that has the, the tree in it. Nice combination of all that with Harry Potter flying through the sky. And Harry is wearing yellow pants. Very nice. Very, very nice. Alrighty. And this is from a another personal friend of mine. So if the names of personal friends come up in... Um, in the winnings, then I will pick a new winner because those folks weren't expecting to get a prize. So she is one of my sketching friends, Kate. And she always takes pictures of her sketches and then puts them on cards for different seasons and stuff. And then she just sent this kind of funky postcard that she found, which is kind of cute. <laughs> little little uh, dragon, I guess, living under the, the sidewalk trying to eat a cupcake. So... <laughs> Very cute. And this is a card from Carol. Happy birthday, yellow flower. Got to love it. And bumblebee, or uh, not bumblebee, ladybug on it. Very sweet. Nice, nice way to bring in the red in two places and just get a nice triangle of focus on the card. Well done. Okay, this is from Penny. And Penny did something with Colorado Craft Company stamp. Cuteness, cuteness. With the little bunny and the little, I haven't figured out what he is. I think he's a, maybe a hamster. But he's adorable. And he's looking up and I love him because he's just so chubby. I love his tummy. His tummy looks very much like my tummy. Maybe that's why I like him. <laughs> Beautiful job, Penny. And here we have one from Teresa. I feel like the lady on Romper Room, just calling out the names. Just a simple hello with beautiful roses. And there's some shimmer on these. I don't know if that is 
shimmer pen or a shimmer watercolor or something, but very pretty. And this is another where I get a second card from the same person. This is another from Lisa. Do you remember seeing that little dog before? Some people are inundating me with gorgeous cards. So live well and love much. Look at all these beautiful dyes. Really nice. Lots of coordinating colors between all of it. And I love that the flowers are grouped in two sections rather than being scattered all over everything because it really just emphasizes the, the shape of the heart to only have two little focal points and one bigger than the other too. Not trying to make them even. Beautiful. And then this one is from Robert and Carolyn, but I'm going to guess from Carolyn. Look how cute. She's got um, that the same paper that's back here in the background is on her little antennas. And that's sweet. And then something shimmery on her dress. So her dress has some shine to it. And this is a great idea. She stamped the happy right over top of it and then just colored right through it, which is kind of nice. So that it's not a dye or anything on top of it. Well, maybe she stamped the happy after she colored it. I don't really know. That's possible. But I don't miss the fact that it's not a dye because I can still read it. So very sweet. So are you guys enjoying this? Am I going too slow? <laughs> All right, we have a card from Lori. And she says on the back here that it's an altered photo, just for context here. So let me see, she has it horizontal. So there are people who do lots of great work altering photos. It, and I'm guessing this is when she took and did some Photoshop things to it to turn it into such a beautiful image. Things like this inspire me to paint them. There's somebody on the Paint My Photo site who does a lot of photo alterations and then posts them. And a lot of times, even though, you know, it's kind of a strange thing to have her post them, I get inspiration because what I see here is lines that I think I could get that with watercolor. I could, I could get an effect like that little break in there. That looks watercolory to me. And I could cre recreate this kind of a thing in watercolor with techniques. So, you know, it may be a photo, but I get inspired to create art from it too. So, Next up, Carrie. Carrie with the K, McDaniel. And this is, um, I'm trying to remember, um, those eyes. Who makes the stamps with these eyes? Is this, um, oh, goodness. My, blur my brain just went completely blank on who makes this stamp. The eyes are very recognizable to me, though. Anyway, I'll think about it later on after this video is over, and I'll be like, yeah, okay, I should have remembered that. But anyway, very sweet card. This is on, it looks like watercolor paper, so the background is watercolor, and then the rest of this looks like it's colored in Copic. Oops, my stack is falling over. Next up, we have a card from Donna. Who makes the Ladybug Girl stamp? I'm not sure either on that one. So this is from Donna W. Really pretty little flowers. I think they're probably forget-me-nots or something, perhaps. And then lots of stitching. This is all thread back here that's just stitched across here. You could do that. I think she did that with the new dies from Ellen Hudson where they're just a, a rectangle or, or something. So she just went from one corner to the other across the whole thing and then made a cross stitch the other way. Isn't that creative? Just using those stitching dies. All right. Next up. Let's... Find out who this one's from. I just got a last name on the envelope, and this is from Diane. Believe in your dreams. Does that sound like something I would say or not? <laughs> Believing in your dreams is something that I really think you need to do as an artist. You need to trust that you can do it and that you don't have to be some fancy artist, highly educated in art in order to make 
art because you can just do it. Just get busy and do it. And I love that she's got this little butterfly that's been added onto the flowers too. So the butterfly is in yellow and black just like the flowers. Gorgeous. I see other people joining us. Glad you are. Um, just so you know, we're going through all these birthday cards. Uh, this is from somebody named Sandy. Um, and then afterward, we're going to pick winners. And we're going to preview my next class that's coming up. That's open for pre-registration right now. So another one with this stamp set. This seems to be a popular one for birthday cards. Fortunately, it's one that I love. And I love that this one is colored completely differently than the other one. And, you know, using the same hamster and the same bunny and stuff. But just a totally different look. And what do we have next? From Andrea. Ah, uh, there we go. Little house mouse in the house. I haven't seen a house mouse stamp in forever. Isn't that cute? Look at those little bees. I used to have a bunch of these and slowly I got rid of them because every time I used them, people would say, where do you get them? And then I couldn't find them anymore. So that was the end of that. But she also did a fancy fold kind of thing for her card. Very nice. And then from TK, Teresa. I have been friends with Teresa. She was part of the group along with Esther where we we were um, doing the Operation Right Home stuff together. So she did it one with nice patterned papers using a colored paper, a soft colored paper for a border instead of like a black paper, which is kind of fun, kind of different. And, you know, a little square for containing all of the sentiment, etc. This one is from Lisa Spangler. Lisa is out doing stuff today. She texted me this morning and said she might join in. I don't know if she's here yet. But Lisa, this is from the new sets from Ellen Hudson. So I think this might have been one of her samples that she did for it. And this is actually a dye, this, this little um, fringy stuff. And I'm going to guess she die cut this out of tissue paper to make it look like this which I think would be really a fun thing to try so yay very cute thank you Lisa and a card from Susan another friend who I have been friends with in person wishing you a lovely day look at that lots of layers she die cut out these cacti and their little pots and the window, this is a, looks like pattern paper here for the window that, that goes up, which I don't think I'm supposed to peel at that. <laughs> I, did, I wasn't sure if it was interactive or not, but it has shades on it and then just using a die to make a window out of it that may not have been intended to be a window, but it works really well for that. And the background papers really coordinate everything together too. Loving that. Then we have a plastic envelope here. And the card is from Nicole. And Nicole is so sweet. Um, she has been praying for me, which is so nice. Every once in a while I get a message from her that just says, what would you like me to pray for you? And it's really nice to have people who affirmatively reach out and do that as opposed to me like, oh my gosh, my hand fell apart, help. And she's just always a praying, praying lady. So very, very nice. Sweet. I love her little yellow dress. Very cute. All right. The last of the small cards is coming up. And this one is from my friend Dixie. She was a big help with the Operation Right Home stuff. She was one of our, our shippers. And I love this stamp. No licking was involved when sealing this envelope. <laughs> I need that stamp. <laughs> I totally do. It's totally a pandemic stamp. Isn't that a 2020 thing? Totally. All right. Let's get this card open. And it has rainbows of sunshine. Now, I don't know if this was a single die or if she cut out every single one of those circles. I think it's a die. It looks like these top ones are connected. So she made just rows of them. 
out of different papers. Dixie is the master of making mass production cards. So knowing her, she probably cut out a whole bunch of them and just layered them all up. Knowing her, she's just, she's really good at that kind of stuff. But lots of great layering of that. The clouds and the sun and everything. Really beautiful. Well done, Dixie, as always. And here's a card from Susan. More yellow. Very nice. Lots of yellow in the background with some um, embossing folder and then just some beautiful flowers to offset it. And notice the flowers don't need to be yellow in order for the card to feel yellow. It's kind of cool. And here is one from Lisa in a homemade envelope. Let's see if I can get it out of here, though. One of the things about homemade envelopes is sometimes the cards get really stuck because they're really big, car bigger cards. That's one of the reasons people end up making envelopes because their card got too big. So here we have another house mouse, and this one is embossed, so it's got a little, little texture I can feel on it. Red, yellow, and blue color scheme being pulled on a skateboard by a snail. <laughs> Very cute. They come up with such cute ideas in these house mouse stamps. And here we have another one with a homemade envelope. This looks like it's made maybe from a calendar or some such. And it even has, oops, if I can get it open, even has color on the inside since it's got two-sided calendar paper or whatever with a beautiful card with some nice loose water coloring. And again, this is embossed. It looks like it's embossed in gold and lots of very loose watercolory look. All right. Now we're going to go for the first of the larger pack of cards, larger size ones. And we have this one from, let's find out, this is from Angelica. And she did her own lettering. I am not bold enough to do my own lettering and let that carry my card, but she is bold to do that. I appreciate anybody who's willing to put their handwriting out there because mine is not not exactly what I would put on my cards, but good for you. All right, and this one, let me see if I can figure out what the name is here. This is from Char and has the little MFT mice having their little party, but you got to see the back side of it when I peeked at it. Look at that! Putting him die cut on the back. I have never seen anybody use a die cut on the back of a card. I might have to try that sometime. Cut out one of the little mice there. Isn't that sweet? And I love the kitty wumpusness of these two tags that, that are just at different angles. It makes it a really happy party scene. And this one I'm curious about. When I opened it, it was like it's this huge thick envelope, as you can see. And I don't know if it's got a present in it or not. We'll find out. But it does have foam. This is like foam stuff. And then there's the card in a yellow envelope. You know, sometimes they say the card is the gift. I think this is one of those cases. That's like a massively thick card with a cute little mouse. This is the Colorado Craft Company, little artist mouse. And beautiful yellow sequins. I love the collection of them, that they're not even and not trying to make it a perfectly even um, symmetrical kind of thing. Little shimmer in the background, shimmery watercolor or some such, and a glossy accents heart up there. And another one that has a die cut on the back. I am so going to have to try that. Oh, and I won't show you the note, but love in clothes. There is also tea stuck into a little heart pocket. Isn't that cute? Just glue down the two sides of it, and you make a pocket out of it and, and glue down the bottom. 
Very sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, this one is from Carol. And it's oversized because it's got that full oversized cupcake. This sucker is so big. The um, Colorado Craft Company makes some super huge, huge, huge designs. And this is one of them. So it warrants a bigger card and thus a bigger envelope. Very beautiful. I want a cupcake that big, by the way. <laughs> Here's a card from Lynn. Another large one doing a whole scene. And look at this. Look at this. She's clearly one of my students, right? So she's drawn a fountain pen, the pencils, put all the Copics and everything in the two-color mug that I have, put out a bottle of ink, and made a card within a card. I mean, how smart is that? Just to make your own custom scene. Super talented. Super, super talented. I tell you, I have the best students. Really amazing work. Totally amazing. And let's see, this one doesn't have a name on the outside, but it has decor on the outside, stamping on the outside, more stamping, washi tape and everything to decorate that. And it is from Renee. Lots of lovely pink and purple. She clearly likes pink and purple. You can see the reflection in the envelope using the same kind of colors. This is white embossing. And I don't know what that background is. Probably inking with splattering on top. Really pretty. Really shiny. And here's another one from Haley. Remember the young person that I told you about before? Happy Bird Day. And I think she painted her own bird. Look at that. That is the coolest bird ever. I love that she's she's got all of these really interesting textures in the watercolor and not worrying about letting that letting the side of the bird wash away into the background is perfectly fine. You've got the head of the bird that's nice and clear. You know what it is. And the rest of it can make all these delicious shapes. I love that. Isn't that sweet? And she's a young person. She's going to be like amazing by the time she even hits her 20s or 30s someday it's going to be yeah keep an eye on that lady so this one is from germany see from sabine in germany and she also made a watercolor card another one of my students she's been one of those people that i've been so impressed with and how she's grown quite something in um uh, in just the the stunning work she's been producing. If you have not joined my Facebook group for my students yet, you should do it because people like her will show you that you can go from card maker to, oh my goodness, great painter. If you just apply yourself. So definitely go join that. And you can join it just with interest in a class. You don't have to be a student. You just need to be interested in maybe being a student. So this is from Janet. And it's a store-bought card, but it has a, a pupper on it. Who doesn't like a card with a pupper, even if it is a store-bought card? A breathtaking sunset, the dew on a rose, a baby's smile, the warmth of a cuddly puppy. Only God could create such wonders. Sweetness. And this one is another that is from overseas, Post Italiane. So that means it's from Italiano, or it Italy. Beautiful. Let me see what the name is here. This is from Mariangela. With lots of gorgeous layered dyes. Aren't those pretty? And that background, this, one, this is some kind of embossing folder or a technique. I'm not sure which. I'm going to guess embossing folder. It looks too tidy to be like a wrinkling paper technique. But look how pretty. Look at all those flowers. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, this one is from Leanne. In another homemade envelope. Lots of purple. And the card has lots of purple. Look at that beautiful ethereal alcohol ink work. 
just letting the letting the color flow and having fun with it and then put a sentiment on it and you've got a card it's what i love about alcohol inks you don't have to actually make anything other than throw color on the paper and i believe this is on upo it feels like upo really pretty And this one is from Millie. And Millie put some embossing on the envelope itself, which I tore through apparently when... Um, wait, I tore through this side to open it. So I'm not sure what happened to that side. But she did emboss the actual envelope. I've never seen that before. Which is kind of a cool idea. Make sure I can get this thing out here. And it is a shaped card in the shape of a little teapot. Isn't that pretty? That is quite the die. That is huge. And it's got to be a die because it's got the little die marks in here. So I've never seen a teapot die that's quite that big, but very sweet. I can't wait to read all these. I feel bad that I'm not like reading the notes inside them. And now we're on to the big guys. Um, there's lots of slimline cards, and then we'll do these really big ones first. This one came in an actual giant package, and this is from Poland. This was one that I had to sign for. They wouldn't even give it to me at the post office. They wouldn't hand it over to me. <laughs> so inside of it are a couple cards. Apparently, some friends in Poland decided to send their cards together so that they could both get in on the action. And look how pretty those are. There's one with all these Lundfawn fairies and a beautiful cloudy background. All those the kind of rainbow clouds. It goes from purple to red to orange to yellow. And all these yummy paper layers. I love paper layers. Almost a, a rainbow of those. But she stayed within the same rainbow from the background, which is nice. And then there's those little pops of yellow. And the same kind of colors that are in here are in all the images. And the only difference, like the, the colors that are unique on this are only in a couple of the outfits. Everything else is coordinated, so it makes those outfits stand out even more. And then this one has so much beautiful die cutting on it. Like, I am, I am in awe. These are not dies that I find I can successfully do anything with, but I am so impressed when people do that. A lovely egg die that has several layers to it, so it's got lots of dimension. And then a nest at the bottom. I mean, wow. That is some... I think these, the bird and the nest are even fussy cut. Wow. Amazing work from Poland. That was worth standing in line to sign for. That was nice. And here we have something from France. Looks like from Catherine. And inspired by me. Hold on. Make sure I don't miss anything. She's got a letter here. That I will save for later. And I am I'm like bracing with excitement for this. Oh my goodness. This is what was in one of my classes. Or similar to it. This is inspired by a class. Where we did a zigzag album. Here I got to zoom out so you can see this. This is amazing. We did a zigzag album in pen and ink. And she did it as a card. An oversized ginormous card. Look at this. Just look at this. I'm guessing this has got to be a building near where she is because it's a very unique and distinct building. Lots of trees. And in the, the class, we go from one scene to the next scene to the next, and they just flow across the entire accordion album. And so she moves into the deeper forest. There's little birdhouses out here and a bridge that goes between them. Goes into the foreground portions here, which is all of the, the uh, mushrooms and things. And then ends with the house over on this side. With a nice big tree, clearly again in the foreground. And talk about fun doors and windows and things. Like the shapes on these are a blast. Really cool. 
with you know, nice deep forest, nice contrast between putting things around the sentiment so that you can really see it. This is stunning. This is totally amazing. I have the best students. Have I told you that? And a lot of people have not thought they could do this. So I want to tell you, you can do this. Like there's people who are doing this and you just don't even, you have no clue. Okay, what do we have here? This one has a crazy stamp on it. Let me see if it tells me Bene Barak. Oh, this looks like from Israel. Yes, it's from Israel, from Dikla. And look how big this one is. This is another large one. As I said, we're in the, the large section of the card stack. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Drew, me and Giallo and Vienna having a birthday party. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys, this makes me so happy. This makes me so happy. And I am wearing a cupcake on my head, which is not where cupcakes should be. They should be in my face because I am hungry and I need lunch. But this is so awesome. Dikla, I love this card. This is crazy amazing. Wow. I, I think I'm glad I saved the bigger ones for later because they're amazing. All right, this is from Wynn. She's another one of my students. Another big envelope and another big, beautiful card. She's been really working hard at her watercolors and her work is really showing the work that she's put in and the practice that she's put in. It's wonderful to see all of what she has been creating. So yay. Thank you, Wynn, for sharing one of your watercolors with me. Okay, so I've got... I'm going to get to all the slim lines here at the end, but I'm trying to make sure that I get all the bigger ones done first. So this one again is airmail. Lots of the overseas ones were airmail. This is from Jen. She's one of my patrons. And look at that. See, I tell you, I have good students. Jen has been making cards and sharing them in the Facebook group and she just draws her own picture. She doesn't bother with stamps. Who needs stinking stamps when you can draw? Look how cute that is. That is adorable. I am so impressed. You guys, I, I just, I can't even fathom how these good students found me and then made me look like I know what I'm doing. So this one is from Tina. And it is from Virginia, so it's not overseas. And it's a smaller card, but she fit it in a big envelope. So there you go. Another Stamping Bella image. Stamping Bella makes such fun ones with legs that I wish I had. My, my legs are not so skinny. And she's got the monster cake going on, which is fabulous. I would love to have a monster cake right now, but I had that little baby cake I showed you earlier. All right, so now we are on to the Slimline cards. And then we have two packages. Should we do the two packages first and then the slim lines? Let's do that. Because I want to get all the big stuff out of the way. So this one, oops, I didn't cover addresses. This one is from Illinois. Let's see, I, I didn't lie to you. I didn't open any of this. So I have no idea what's in these. I opened the boxes enough that I wouldn't have to tear them open here. And this says, I can't read the... Yeah, let's see. Your idea to have a birthday was simply a stroke of genius. <laughs> yes, uh, it was a stroke of genius to be born. It was all on me, right? It was all my my fault, my uh, my blessing. Oh, my goodness. Now, this could be fun. Which door should we pick? Uh, I, I don't even know where to start. There's going to be fun things in them, I'll bet you, because this is kind of a heavy piece. So there might well be fun things in here. I don't know. Where's the cakes? This Robin is the the person who sent it. And I don't want to tear anything, but I want to see what's in them. This might be like an advent calendar where you get treats in each of the windows. Because some of them are skinny and some of them are 
have like, you know, something bigger in them. So this fits a Ghirardelli if you're looking for how big that is. Um, but they each feel like they have something different in them. So I bet they all have different wonderful snacks. Oh, how cute is that? This whole little book is just adorable. I don't know if that's like a tutorial. That's a, that's a tutorial waiting to happen. That is amazing. Thank you, Robin. Wowza. And then there's this other box that came. And it is from the grocer's daughter chocolate delivery. And so let's open this and see what's inside. Grocer's daughter's chocolate. And then there's all kinds of this stuff in there. But I don't want to get all over my table surface. We have candy bar. More candy bar. Oh my goodness. Oh, this looks so yummy. And it comes in this giant box for these little candy bars. That makes me feel so special to have a giant box full of fuzzy stuff to deliver deliciousness. And I know I did get a note from whoever had this sent to me, and I will have to go look that up and say, yes, it arrived, see? So that looks like lunch to me. I don't know about you, but hazelnut sea, bark, uh, sea salt bark and very berry bar. Sounds like a lunch menu. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to get on to the um, slimline cards. And this is from, oh, I can't really read that, Rogrel Sotelo. I'm not sure if I'm even saying the name correctly. Yeah, I can't read it any better on the inside, but nonetheless, let us cards they're about to tumble over and I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see better Charlie Brown and Snoopy and we have a whole dog house and everything little birdie told me it's your birthday so that is very cool and I'm going to see if I can figure out this is from Utah I was wondering if this is from somewhere else because there were interesting stamps on on it from the post office we have a card from Steph, and she put a big cupcake on the outside and a cupcake on the inside. See, this is how that big cupcake card that I showed you a little bit ago, this is how it looks on a slimline card. It's one of the reasons that slimline cards are good, so you have options to fit things on them that you can't fit on other stuff. And I love that she wasn't afraid to cut off half of the cupcake. Not at all. The boldness in that is awesome. And this is actually stamped on, I'm going to guess, potentially patterned paper because there's these white dots on it maybe. Unless she colored that, which is amazing to get all those dots really even that way. So who knows? But it, it's definitely um, cut out. The, the, um, the wrapper is cut out by, looks like by hand because it's not a die. It doesn't have that white line around it. And all of this is fussy cut as well. I love me some fussy cutting. It makes me happy. Then we have a card here from Nancy. And she decorated the outside of the envelope with confetti. And the card on the inside has three pictures on it. I love these stamps from MFT with these little critters on them in little squares. I haven't seen them with these photo corners on them, though. That's a really cool idea. And I think they call them all selfies. They're, they're supposed to be little, little Polaroids. But well-colored, really nice. Lots of great colored pencil work here. And then fun celebratory pattern paper in the background. Quite cute. And we then have this one from Tracy. Tracy sent gnomes. Gnomes are a thing now. These are different gnomes than on the earlier card I, that I saw. Or maybe it is the same gnome. I don't know. The house looks familiar. The house looks like it. I'll have to go back and check and see if those two are the same from the same company. 
But again, love the, the background that's added, the continuity between everything so that you have one horizon line. Just really nice. Nice job. Oh, so the chocolate is from Sabine. Thank you, Sabine, for the chocolate. I knew it was somebody. I didn't want to mention any names unless somebody claimed having sent the chocolate and credit the wrong person. So, okay, next one. See who it's from on the inside. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this one is fully anonymous, except for it says Linton on the envelope. So all I have is a last name because guess what? She didn't put a note on the inside. <laughs> I don't know what her first name is, so I can't give her credit other than Linton. And she also didn't put anything on the back. So I just got the beautiful card with lots of happy yellow on it, lots of bees and uh, honey hives and things. Very cute. Nicely done. Uh, here we have Allison. She is, I believe, in Canada. I know it's Canada, but Canada sounded more fun. Look at that one. That is quite the stamp. Allison is quite good at coloring, by the way. If you can't tell, she's quite amazing. And that stamp is a whole full-length thing, unless she has stamped it twice. I'm not really sure. It kind of looks like this could be the same stamp going two directions, but if so, she did a really good job of mixing them in the middle because I, I don't really see how they're identical. But they're close. I don't know. I try to figure things out for myself, and I don't always. But really lovely coloring. Isn't that beautiful? Then we have Marjorie. Slimline card. Again. Hope your day is a real treat. Puppy dog cards are always welcome around this house because the dogs are wondering where their treats are. They don't understand that it's my birthday, not theirs. And here we have one from Alley Cats. Let's see if there's a name inside as well. Look how cute. Oh my goodness. Look at him. Look at him. Look at that. Look. I just want to hug him. I really want to hug him. So this is from Alexis. So what it says on the inside, all of these letters are popped. So there's lots of dimension on it. Beautiful, nice, strong color in the background so that you can actually read the words. I know a lot of times you don't see enough contrast there, but really like that. I love that simple band of crazy color and just a little collection of some of these epoxy stickers to, to set it off. Really fun. And it even works that he's gray and the packages are yellow because it puts the emphasis on the packages and on the birthdayness of the card. And our last card, yes, it is our last card, is from Sherry. Let's see if I can get it out of the envelope here. And this is another one that uh, people must think I need tea because this one came with some tea in it and tea bags. These used tea bags to use as card embellishments. What a cool idea. And especially using good earth because, you know, good earth things are good for the earth. Very cool. So we have two more things to do in our live stream today. Let me switch my camera over. Okay, am I back? I think I'm back. So now it's time to pick winners. I told you at the beginning of this whole video that I had nine packages of crafty goodies, stamps and dies, that are in envelopes in the living room, and they are all packed up and taped shut. I just need to put addresses on them. And one of the reasons I decided to do the giveaway today as a surprise giveaway is because I have had so many people not claim their prizes. I gave away three gift cards, gift cards to Colorado Craft Company, three. 
and not one of them claimed it. Not one. And I, I don't know what to do with that. So I figured since I have everyone's return address, if you didn't put your return address on here, you're disqualified. <laughs> then at least I can pick a winner that I could put their name on the envelope and send it out. So I am going to do that, okay? So if you ever enter one of my giveaways, and I have some coming up on the blog, you have to follow the blog so you can find out if you won. I'm not going to chase people down. Okay, enough whining. Shall we pick some winners? I've got them all. All the envelopes are in a box. And I'm just going to randomly thumb through and pick one. Make sure it has an address and Penny in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Congratulations to you. You have won one of the prize packs. And let's go here to Lisa. And Lisa is in, take the tape off so I can tell you where you're, Lisa Itatani in Cupertino, California. If I do remember, if I end up picking an international one, then those will get cards instead. So randomly pick, randomly pick, randomly pick from all the card envelopes. And we have one from, okay, that one is one of my personal friends who is not expecting to win any crafty goodies. So we're going to pick another one. We'll go to the next one in that little stack. Kathy in Sunset Sun City West, Arizona. Congratulations to you. We have three winners. I will reread the names after I finish so that we have some names to share and be excited about. Okay, next up. Marjorie. Marjorie, you get to win. And I wrote something on the back of this. Okay. I wrote a little note on Marjorie's envelope that I forgot to read. It says, see back, because it says on the back, 2021 better show up. <laughs> and I liked that. Show up like it has some sense. When I saw the, uh, the ship, that, that big container ship, you may have noticed that's blocking the Suez Canal or wherever it is right now. I don't think it's the Suez Canal, wherever it is. It's Panama Canal, wherever it's blocking things. I saw an article that said it might mean we don't have toilet paper again. As soon as I saw that, I realized 2020 is trying to make a comeback. It's trying to take our toilet paper. So 2021, do not do this to us. We want our toilet paper. And this is also Chocolate Labs, our scratch and sniff washi. Did not realize that. I'm not sure what it smells like. Oh, it, is a, it does smell like chocolate. Okay. There is such a thing as scratch and stiff. Scratch and sniff washy. So I'm going to let you know about that. Okay. Let's go pick another one. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Susan in. Peel the tape so I can see where you're from. Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. One, two, three, four, five. We have four more winners to choose, and I'm going to pick randomly. How about this one? Uh, the France card, but France, you're going to get a card instead of, uh, this was the one that I think that did the big uh, opening out thing. So she's going to get a card instead of a package because I can afford to send a card. All right. So we're going to keep going, keep going. Da, da, da. Still blocking the Suez Canal. Okay. I thought, I thought it said the Suez Canal. All right. I did another one where it was a friend of mine. Oh, and we have another foreign one. So this is from, um, what was her name? It just says W. Van Gaal in the Netherlands. So you're going to get a card since I can't afford to send giant packages. All right, let's keep going. I've got to go find some people in the U.S. that I can send these packages to because they need to be out of my house. All right, next up is Sandy Marquette in. Find your location under my tape. In Corydon, Indiana. Is that what it says? Yes, Corydon, Indiana. Congratulations, Sandy Marquette. 
two, three, four, five, six. Three more to go. Dun, dun, dun. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba Let's pick one of the bigger ones. Just so we get over there in that pile. And this one is... There was no name on it. Ah! I'm going to have to go match that up. Okay. Let's go to the next one in the pile instead, which has no address on it. <laughs> this is, you're not making this easy, y'all. You got to put your address and your name on the envelope so I can see it. All right. And I picked another foreigner. I picked Canada. Allison, congratulations. You're going to get a card. All right, we're going to go back to the small ones. I'm not having any success with the big envelopes. So, Lori Padilla, you are our next lucky winner in Chandler, Arizona. Okay, I again picked a friend. What's, what's up with that? Okay, Danny with two eyes. You have been selected, and you are in Oregon, in Portland. Congratulations. You have won a prize pack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have one more prize pack to give away. Okay, that one already won a prize. She's one of the ones that sent in several cards. So I guess she had good chances of winning one. So this one is going to be for our last winner, Michelle Bylaw in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, yeah, congratulations to you. So I will reread the names in case anybody has any doubts as to whether they want. And then to stay tuned. Don't go away yet because we have the preview of the class coming up. Uh, we have Michelle Bylaw, Danny Blaylock in Portland. Mich uh, Michelle is in Dublin, Ohio. Lori Padilla in Chandler, Arizona. Sandy Marquette in Corydon, Indiana. Susan Logan in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Kathy Meyer in Sunset... Sun, I can't even say it. Sun City, West, Arizona. I keep wanting to say Sunset. Lisa Itatani in Cupertino, California. Penny in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And Marjorie Chen... In wherever you're at. Where are you at? I did not pull your tape off yet. In Saratoga, California. So congratulations to the winners. We also have cards that will be going out to France and the Netherlands and Canada. So there will be cards going there. Put those on a pile so I can get the names put on the envelopes. And now we will go for the class. I have been working on this class for like six months. It has been a ridiculous adventure in trying to get it done. The way that I do my classes, just so you know, is for a time period before I start to take stamped images and I just sit on the sofa and I just start coloring random scenes. And I try to see if I fit like all the scenes into some kind of a thing that feels like a class on a topic. And Throughout the winter, this is all started back in November when I was doing my coloring on these, it started turning into like enchantment and magic and forest scenes and picture fairies and gnomes and that kind of stuff. Because there's so many stamps like that out there, we need lots of scenes for those. I also have been into the slimline deal. Like the slimline cards have got me excited because there's more real estate to cover and I get to color more. So that's good, right? Those two things are great. And then I ran into the beginning of 2021, things got crazy and I didn't get to filming anything, but I did get a lot of samples done. And then a couple weeks, well, maybe a month ago, I started doing some filming in between everything else and it was going and I got four of the lessons filmed, nothing processed and put into videos and voiceover, but I got them filmed and I was all excited. And then the hand, the hand happened. And everything stopped. And it really makes me mad because I was on a roll. I was so ready. I wanted that class to launch today. 
And if, obviously it can't launch today because I'm not done with it yet. I only have four lessons filmed and I don't have voiceovers done for them. However, I have put the class up for pre-registration. Pre, meaning it's not ready yet, but you could register for it if you want. And there is a bigger discount on now during pre-registration than there will be on the day of registration. It will still be discounted then. So if you want to wait and see exactly what the lessons are, then you can wait. And I'll put a video here on YouTube to tell you that the class is live and show you what the things are. But I thought today I would show you some of the practice stuff that I did in order to get to this point in the class. Do you want to see those? Because the, these are not necessarily exactly what will be in the class, but they're close. They're the same kind of idea. So I thought I'd run through some of them because I have a whole bunch of them. They're not put on cards yet, but I thought it would be fun to show you. This is going to be a level four class. And that means that if you have not taken a bunch of the intermediate classes at level three, you might want to take some of those first because some of those techniques are ones that I'm turning into something else in this level four class. Does that make sense? And it's also going to be a little more expensive because there's 10 lessons in it. It's not a mini class. It's a little higher up and that sort of thing. So there's going to be 10 different ones. And these are maybe what they are. In the pre-class or the pre-registration page, I listed some titles that are working titles because I may change some of the images because there's like, there's one in here that I ended up doing that I hadn't even done before Christmas. I did it just before I filmed it and I'll tell you what that one is. So here's one of them with a beautiful manicured garden and of course Snoopy's in it. There's no stamps that are going to be part of the class. And if you have Copic markers and you've been taking my intermediate classes, don't worry, you're going to have plenty of markers. You don't have to go out and buy new markers for this. I will have a list of all the colors used in the class, but you can use whatever colors. It's really teaching you how to make things like these glowing trees so that you can use them in other ways. That's what the class is all about. And when we get to a class that's a level four, I'm expecting you don't need to have your hand held anymore because you've got enough experience that I can show you how to do this and then you can kind of take it and run with it. I mean, I'll show you how to do the whole scene, but anyway, we're going to have some verticals and some horizontals. So this one is going to be all beautiful garden, lots of flowers. And there's lots of flowers in all of these. There's lots of craziness and lots of trees. Another one. A lovely magical forest to go take a walk through. And here's an, the same kind of forest, but at nighttime with twinkle lights, because twinkle lights are fun. Uh, we have a sunset. So looking out over a scene. Uh, let me see, which order do I want to do these? Uh, this one where I picture a little gnome or a little fairy living in that hole in the tree. So horizontals and verticals. And then there's this guy. I've done a forest like this, the forest background in watercolor before, but it's fun doing it in Copic this time. And I mean, they'll all change a little bit from here. Uh, this one is one, this is the one that I did like just before I started filming because I wanted to do a gazebo. So I'll show you how to make a gazebo like this. Should be fun. And then this one is my favorite. And I think I'm going to save it for the last lesson because it's my favorite. But it's really a, a scene where you can make characters walk up a stair into a nice big clearing. So that is the samples with stamps. That's not the finished ones in class because I don't have all that done and ready. But my hope is, and what I'm going to try for, is to see if I can get at least one or two of the lessons processed, voiced over, and everything put together by April 1st so that you can at least start on the class, even if you've pre-registered now. But once I put some content in there, the price is going to go up. So from now 
until April 1st, you get a bigger discount. You get a little less discount once it gets to be April 1st. So if you know somebody who wants to take this class, you might want to tell them they should watch this video and zoom to this part of it at the end and then see if they want to take the class and then sign up for it early because early is a bigger discount. And right now, if, if I did things right, I did go in and put a link to the class in the description of this video. So you might need to refresh after you leave this in order to see that. But you can also just go look for Copic Enchantment. That's what I'm going to call it. I thought that would be a really sweet name for it. So hopefully on April 1st, you get to at least start on the class. And then once I have all 10 lessons done and processed and ready, and they're all open for everybody, then I will put a video here on YouTube previewing everything and talking about the class in general. So you'll know it's ready for you. But if you check in on April 1st and thereafter, then you'll be able to get whatever lessons I get done in the meantime, because I'm going to try to get them uploaded and processed as fast as this little hand can get itself moving. But I don't know how fast that will be. It might take a couple weeks. So we'll see. And that, um, that link for pre-registration will just slowly crawl up um, as we get toward, okay, the class is now fully live. Does that make sense? I hope. And I hope it inspires you because these are going to be so much fun. I cannot wait to start using stuff like this on cards. The other thing I'll do is as I get one of the lessons done and, and it, you know, it, it's live in your account, if you've pre, if you pre-registered for it, I will post a snippet of the finished piece on my social media. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'll just say heads up, you know, go pick enchantment. Next lesson is available so that you can go and know that that's the day that you can go check it out. All right. So that is my crazy plan. I thought if I did a pre-registration and you guys were all signing up for it, then I'd have some motivation to set everything else aside and work on this because this is the really fun part, but it's also the part that hurts my hand. So we'll see how, how motivational that gets to be. And it also is going to help the budget because I have a healthcare insurance payment coming up. And yes, yeah, the, the joy of running your own business and being in the slow times and not being able to do anything about it. So hopefully if some of you are willing to step in and sign up early for a class that doesn't exist yet, you can pre-register. So how is that for excitement? I give you presents on my birthday after you have given me a hundred presents. I am kind of excited. It's kind of a two-way street, like I talked about in my, my big video with the artists in it. It's a two-way relationship. You feed me, I feed you. We all grow, we all make art. And I love that. So I think that's about it. I'm going to try to go read through all of the chat if I can. I got to figure out how to do that so I can see everything that you've said. And if I've missed any questions, I will try to answer them maybe in the regular comment section or something. Or if I can, I, I don't, I'll see if I can figure out how to do that because I don't think I can do that in chat. But I have not been able to read all of that. There's a lot on my screen that I've missed. <laughs> So if you have any questions, you can leave them there and I'll see how I can figure out how to answer them. Maybe I'll have to do that on social. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank you for sending all these amazing cards. This was a blast. I'm going to try to see if I can lay them all out and get some big, a couple of big photographs to post on social so you can all see just thumb through all those cards and remember which ones you wanted to try to case because there's lots of in the, lots in there that are worth casing lots of little ideas and some big ideas that can inspire lots of your card making so i'm gonna go we have been at this for almost two hours you guys you guys been eating your wheaties so i'll see you later have a great day i'm gonna go take pictures and i'll see you in another video next week tuesday thursday only just so you know i'm gonna hop on tuesday and then I want to do Thursday so that I'm not posting on Good Friday. So it's just two videos next week since you've got this monstrosity crazy video to still keep you busy. I will see you all later. Thank you again.
Love you all. I'll see you soon. Let's put on that outro music. Thank you.